everything seemed fine until god damn he believed I'm drifting into like this lunacy world which is where I was at this point Hello, ballers! What's going on? It's Preacher. Say hello to Romero. A good name, actually. Surprised I got this. I might change him back to Romero once this challenge is done. But of course, his, cha his name has changed again with the release of this video. Um, this is the saddest part of this challenge. The dream is collapsing. It's falling apart beneath my feet, uh, which we knew was going to happen at some point. We knew we were going to hit the wall. And I've made a ton of discoveries here that I really want to talk in depth about uh, in the summary video. But we have hit what is what I almost consider to be the living, breathing, thriving tumor uh, that is on World of Warcraft. And it's right here. This is the biggest issue Blizzard wants to tackle, I would hope. Uh, but they're kind of responsible for it. I don't think it's all the players' faults. Uh, but this is the mass. This is the great mass of players who are stuck utterly stuck and a big thing that i believe is going on from what i can see is they are stuck because they don't know how to fix it they up until this point right this is our goal for our goal for the last two days which was friday and saturday we finished on the last video at 9 36 we'd play with some friends we have a dark heart 14 was to get keystone master that was what i was aiming for uh on friday and i was hoping to actually have the challenge wrapped up and done by now excuse me it's seven o'clock in the morning I'm, i've got a cold <laughs> excuse me um i was hoping to have this wrapped up and done because getting the heroic raid will be difficult but it's going to be a case of spam invites so based on the feedback from last time uh, a lot of you were like D don't join a guild that kind of defeats the purpose i mean i don't think it does but I want to eliminate as many excuses as possible. For, if someone's going to shit all over this project regardless. There's no getting away from that. Someone will use anything they can find as an excuse. We've seen already, oh, you're only getting invites because you're a warlock and for summons and stuff like that. Like, any possible grasp of a straw people can find will shit all over this. Regardless, I'll do what I can to eliminate as many as possible. We're at this point now where people have been taught, mainly by the community mainly by the community because there are lots of signs from blizzard that that's not the case uh the item level is the golden key to enter the, the city of dreams right it's all about gear get more gear and things will happen and people expect this to happen get more gear and and things will happen uh i see a lot in raid threads is about time invested right uh, and people seem to have this bizarre idea that if you it's it's, it's time relative i saw this based on legendaries as well is rewards should be time relative which is never the case <laughs> it's never the case um do, if you could if i could put a random pug in front of say mythic fell hounds for a year and they will never kill it right it's just not gonna happen it's nothing to do with time and nothing to do with time but that message doesn't come across because of course most of the barriers to entry are based on gear within the game that's community decided not blizzard decided community decided that gear is the barrier to entry so you have this understanding amongst a ridiculous portion of the player base that if i increase my item level that's what gets me the key that's what gets me because the, the message says things like in the group finder it's like oh well nine four five plus okay then my goal is not to learn how to play in any way shape or form learn what happens in the raid or the dungeon that's not irrelevant what i need to do is hit this magical 945 number the doors will open in i go and then i will be showered with the gifts and the virgins and all that kind of stuff that comes with it uh no <clears throat> no that's not the case it never has been never will be it might get you entry but it's likely to also get you to kick out the door um so what we have now is we're in the world where no longer just being way over geared is enough it's no longer enough and that's a big fucking problem that's a big problem because up until this point um an anecdote here is my guild master and kill count lost who taught me most of the sort of epiphanies uh, about wow that really opened my eyes to a lot of things uh he said to me once when he tried he was a tank primarily but he went fury towards the end of wrath of the lich king 
And uh, we were talking about the top geared Fury Warriors in the world because we were a 10-man guild compared to like the 25-man uh, ICC guys, which had a higher gear level. And we were comparing it to some of the top guys, and he just said to me, I said, uh, maybe you can go for a rank one. I was very naive. And he was like, dude, no. He's like, you don't understand. Like, those top guys, they can auto-attack and maybe do as much damage, if not more, than I can do playing perfectly. And I was like, wow. <laughs> That's really sad. <laughs> That's really sad, but also very true. Uh, that in a lot of cases, if you have enough gear behind you that playing incorrectly doesn't really matter because your the way your your abilities do so much damage um that they're naturally going to win for you right uh and that's what it really opened my eyes to the idea of that so let me give an example of a moonkin because we bumped in uh, we had a moonkin in the last video who was kicked from the normal raid for only doing 300k dps on uh, coven of shivara despite not dying and we, I ran into a similar Moonkin this week uh, in this video. And there is a point where Blizzard likes to overgear you very quickly for easy content and then push you into content that doesn't have the rewards that even will be worthwhile to you. We saw that since the beginning of this project. And in that world, it doesn't matter if you play like shit and don't know what's going on because you're going to do so much damage and have so much hp and that it's irrelevant nothing can kill you like it's all you'd have to go out of your way to die and therefore things will die and you learn nothing you don't learn anything without any struggle you don't learn anything and therefore you constantly glide you glide on this cloud of just overgearing and crushing everything in your path and it's kind of like playing cookie clicker i don't know if you guys ever saw the bit or the game cookie clicker where the entire object of the game is just to click the cookie that's it they did nothing else you just click 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 and that's kind of the game you're playing at that point you're getting nothing for it there's no reward really because all the gear is beneath you uh, but you're still winning and there's some some people are getting satisfaction from that alone. It's like I didn't struggle, I didn't have to try, uh, and I still won. I'm happy with that because I won. Ultimately, I won. And um, once we now we're in this world now, which is like uh, these dungeons that are so I, I'm gonna say past ten, and I know the raiders are gonna go what, but believe me, you'll see in a minute. Uh, past ten, um, you're no longer able to get away with that. You're no longer able to get away with that. You just It just doesn't work anymore. It falls The whole system falls apart. And part of that is because of the affixes. So we had Bolstering Tyrannical Grievous uh, this week. Uh, which means the bosses don't just fall over. That's what that means. The bosses don't just fall over. And in many cases, people have never seen the bosses do anything. And when they have done something, it's done so little that they've never noticed it anyway. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like we've just crushed everything through there. And everybody's just chasing the solution to their problems when they fail, which is just get more gear. But the problem is, that doesn't work. That's not going to get you through this encounter. Until you get to like 970, sure, maybe then you can crush a 10, right? Or you get some god tier tank who could solo the dungeon. But they're not in these dungeons. They're not pugging 10s, right? Those guys aren't pugging 10s because they would never do that. Why the hell would they do that in any way, shape, or form? Unless they were an alt and you managed to catch them as they're sort of on this gear ride all the way to 15. If they're a great tank, uh, they'll have no troubles at all. They're not in your average day-to-day -day pugs. So Keystone Master was our goal. I had a Dark Heart 14 key from playing with the Buds. I had a Dark Heart 14 key. No worries, right? <laughs> in we go. And how many people signed up for it? I want to. Okay, I'm going to put another disclaimer in here uh, that you guys should be aware of going forward. I am the lowest geared in every single one of these dungeons by 10 item levels. I am not joking you. Uh, I talked about this in the last video. It's this weird thing that happens once you cross into 10. Everybody goes from being like 916, 920 up until 10, and then it switches because you've entered the mass. You've broken into this huge mass of players who were all 960 and 950 and 945 plus, right? Who are just shit. Not everybody, but the vast, vast majority. They're just terrible players who have um, not picked up on this idea that maybe I should just practice my class and maybe then things will start to happen for me. Um, no, they're just chasing items. So they're doing a Mythic Plus. They're getting a Titanforge Cash. They've been playing for a while. So they've got a lot of really high-level gear 
probably most people that I saw had got it out of Mythic Plus boxes. There is no way they had done a Mythic Plus that could have dropped it. They or unless they got uh, ridiculously lucky. But they, it was from boxes. That's what they've been doing. Finding boxes for ages to get these golden, get the key to the golden city. So into Dark Art we go. Um, everything seemed fine until. Xavius, which some of you probably remembered, but it's Dark Art 14 Xavius, Tyrannical, which means he's pretty dangerous, including the downdraft guy. I think I soloed the down I end up soloing the downdraft guy in this dungeon. Um It was really dangerous. And what started to happen, which should have been the red flags for what would be the remainder of these two days that I spent doing this, is uh, a lot of suggestions on how to deal with this that were all incorrect. And that was worse, because people were passing advice around, like, you need to do this, you need to be uh running and then running backwards with the debuff you need to stand off to the side and all this kind of thing um all these suggestions and essentially it was the explosion most people know about the explosion at xavius uh and i was just like just pop a hellstone after there because you're getting grievous and the healer just can't keep up now our healer had been weak uh he wasn't the best healer uh throughout the dungeon and uh then that that just we're not getting healed enough we're not getting healed enough it's like yeah, well you can help i was like just use the defensive you get a big warning saying it's coming Use a defensive and then Hellstone immediately after so he can pop you up better, right? And he was like, well, we shouldn't have to do that. That was the answer. And it's such a fucking cunt thing to happen. It's like, I shouldn't have to do that. I was like, does it matter? Like, you want to kill the boss, right? Do the thing Do the thing that helps. Do the thing. It, it'll help you out. Just if This is going to happen. Why are you putting it all on him? He's saying, well, I don't need to do that. Somebody else should deal with that problem. It's like we can all help each other. This is a team-based game. Uh, so it was a depleto. We wiped like three times on Xavius. It was so sad. Um, it was so, so sad. But it did put out something interesting. So even though people had no idea how to deal with the more difficult side of things, uh, the debuffs, and this is maybe something that Blizzard should focus on, the silence and fear debuff. <laughs> fear debuff. Someone still got that wrong. Uh, but people knew how to deal with that because they've had to deal with that since Heroic. Because there's, you can't outgear being silenced, right? So you get Nightmare Bolt, you get silenced. And therefore, people knew how to deal with that. And maybe that's what Blizzard should look at, is things like that that aren't just damage, which can be ignored with a lot of gear. But look at things that literally do something to your character that disables it and needs dealing with. People take note of that because they can't not. It can't be ignored. So that was interesting. But what did we get out of that? Upper Karazam 13 in the beginning of my nightmares. <sighs> I consider Upper to be um, a pretty free win. <laughs> There's barely any trash. The bosses are really easy. Even on Tyrannical. God damn. God damn. So when we went to Upper 13. Um, group 1 couldn't get past the curator. No, Shade of Medivh. Shade of Medivh. Which is something you probably recognize. Uh, Shade of Medivh. Flame Wreath came back to haunt my nightmares um i just it, it, i mean I, i've wiped on stream to flame read some people just don't really get it still and it's it's very annoying because it's stand still <laughs> that's it that's the whole thing is stand still but as somebody who progressed in karazan during the burning crusade it some people just don't get it don't just don't don't move and it was uh, instantly people left after that because flame wreath. I think we had two wipes and the second one people were like, I'm out. If you still can't do flame wreath, I don't want to be here. Okay. Up at 12, in we go. Shady Medivh again. This time though, Ceaseless Winter. So I'm, I've got to explain these because a lot of people just don't know what these are. Ceaseless Winter is just you need to keep moving in some way. Uh, jumping is fine. Of which I got shouted at. I, so I was the only one left alive. <laughs> and uh, this 960 healer, 960 Holy Paladin, uh, is going, jumping doesn't work. You can't do that. I was like, jumping's fine. Like, you check the damage taken. I didn't take any. Like, jumping is absolutely fine. It's like, no, you can't jump. I was like, yeah, you can't. And I was like, okay, well, fine. <laughs> he said, move around, don't jump. So I was like, well, there's me jumping. Um, failed again. Failed again. We're now down to an 11. But if you don't know, if you don't finish the dungeon, your key doesn't change. That will become very important later. Upper 11. In we go. There was a point in this dungeon as we were wiping on the last boss over and over and over. When 
one of the members of the group reveals that his gear's been broken since halfway through the dungeon. And despite being, I think it was like 958 and doing like 400k damage, and as asking, and in keeping quiet, his HP being so low. He believed, he believed that we would have kicked him from a Mythic Plus, which doesn't work, by the way, because it ends the key. <laughs> That if he told us his gear was broken, he would have got kicked. So he decided to keep it secret and ruined the key, essentially. <sighs> Don't do that. So we sent him off, summoned him back. And it wasn't that bad. Like, we'd managed to two-man most of the dungeon. We did finish in time. But don't do that. It was infuriating because we'd wiped... I think we'd wiped two times on the last boss... Um, people, I mean, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to describe as the dungeons get easier and easier and you're still trying, because I was trying my absolute best to get this done. Um, and just watching all these guys who should demolish this dungeon, like with all, with all, res with all respect, these guys should demolish the dungeon. I should be the weakest. I should be the weakest player there in terms of output and stuff. I'm great with Grievous because I'm a warlock, but other than that. They should demolish me in every step of the way. And not that not happening at all. Like, in no way, shape, or form is that happening. And um, hearing things like, well, you know, my gear's been broken since, like, the Mana Worm. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> dude. Uh, don't do that. But we did finish in time, just. We did finish in time. Uh, and we got ourselves a Black Rook Hold 12. Now, this is where it got interesting again. So, a 966, I believe he was, Warlock joined this Black Rook 12 with a friend who was, like, reasonably low, like 920-something. And, obviously, he was, like, carrying his friend, right? I'll use my character with a massive item level to get you into the dungeons, and we'll do it that way. Works for me. I have no problem with that. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, so, yeah, brought him along. Just AFK'd the dungeon, essentially. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, why am I doing more damage on my 935 Warlock? He's playing the exact same spec than you, who is 966. Why is this happening to me? Um, fucking piece of shit, bastard. Uh, it was annoying me. I don't know whether he was AFKing or a bad player. I don't know. Um, but it was not right. And we, my, we did plus two it. We did plus two it, but it should have been the easiest plus three of my life, right? Should have been the easiest plus three of my life. Uh, but no, it didn't happen. But what the fuck? You thought Upper Karazhan was bad. Failure after failure after failure. Cathedral of the Eternal Night 14. <sighs> okay, so Cathedral's interesting. Because Cathedral is one of the newer dungeons to the game. Which means people have generally played it less. But not only that, it launched uh, overtuned. And therefore, people avoided it like the plague in Mythic Plus. Uh, but it's been fixed since then. And I actually consider it to be a quite a nice dungeon now, to be honest. I think it's kind of fun. I think the the, the spider poison uh, person could be a little overtuned. Because it's even a mini boss. Uh, but other than that, I think it's kind of fine. Um, but I knew I was fucked. I mean, I turned to Andy straight away as soon as I saw this key. And I just went, I'm fucked. I'm, I'm totally fucked. There's no way I'm getting this done. And I tried for over an hour. Now, this next section on Cathedral is going to uh, take into account, like, five hours of trying to get through this. So, Cathed Cathedral 14, I waited and waited and waited, and not a single sign-up. Not one sign-up. D-list the group. I then tried to join a 15. I was like, I'll just join a 15. But, of course, we're talking about this ladder system. So, in a world where there's 960s and 950s all in this mass that I I'm telling you about... This mass of players contains people from 960 plus, from 945 plus, and they're all floating around this 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 mass. When a 935 signs up, you're just not going to take them. And I'll be honest, after doing this for the last couple of days, I have um, inviting people who have the biggest item level you can find makes a hundred percent sense. As much as people get upset about it and stuff because they they feel they're a better player, yeah, me too. But it doesn't matter because it's just too risky. What you're hoping for, if you're putting your key into that group finder to look for people to do a dungeon with you, and you obviously want to get the key done, what you're looking for is, okay, these players might be fucking awful, but if they have enough gear, they might do just enough before they die or fuck up massively. 
uh, that it's okay. That's what you're hoping for. So if they're going to die in the first 20 seconds of the fight, hopefully they'll do 3 million DPS before that happens and get you enough of the way there. That's why it's there. Like it or not, that is the situation. So I had no choice. Like, I waited an hour. I tried to get into some 15s. Wasn't going to happen. My character's just too low. Um, what am I going to do here? And I had no other choice. As sad as it was, I had to tank the key. There is nothing else I could have done. I was just stuck otherwise. I was completely stuck. Uh, tanking the key, if you're not sure what it means, is I had to go into Cathedral, put the key in, start the dungeon, and then just walk my ass on out and reset it. And that just lowers the key. So I went in with my Cath 14. I tanked it to a 13. And every time I tanked it, <laughs> which now gives away that I had to do this multiple times, I tried to get a group together for it. Um, just to see whether 13 is more tempting than 14, 12 more tempting than 13. And it worked. One, 14, not a single sign up. 13, sign up straight away. Could have been timing, could have been anything. Uh, but I got a really overgate healer, two decent DPSs, uh, missing a tank, unfortunately, missing a tank. And, and a lot of people who are. Uh, and a lot of people who kind of want to know everything before they go in, right? A lot of people have this mindset is I need to know every single thing about this dungeon before I even try it. Instead of maybe doing it at a lower level and trying to figure things out, I want to know everything about it. Um, so no tanks. So we waited for about 15 minutes and we had a good chat going, which was really nice. We had a really good chat going. Uh, so everyone was feeling pretty happy and confident. Had a really overgeared Windwalker, if I remember. And um, the warrior pipes up. And he's like, you know what? I'll tank it. He's like, I'm, I've got some decent tank gear. Again, this gear idea. And I, sh I hadn't really come to my conclusions on the situation. And I should have said no. Uh, but he was like, I'll tank it. Yeah, I've got pretty decent tank gear. <sighs> we asked. Everybody asked. I was like, you don't have to. Like, it's fine. We're not, nobody minded waiting. We were having a good bit of bants. So it's like, nobody minded hanging around. Uh, but he's like, no, nah, it's fine. I'll do it. We'll get us, we'll get somebody quicker. I'll tank it. So we were like, okay, cool. So he switched over to a tank, and uh, very quickly, obviously got a DPS because we had a tank healer and two DPS, and everyone's like, oh, a DPS bot, get me in. Uh, got some guy, in. and it became very apparent. Again, I've got no ill will towards this towards this guy. I just wish he would have asked. That's all. Just ask if you're not sure, or you, you you know, it's not about gear. It's not about gear. It's not. Uh. It, not only did he not know what Cathedral of the Eternal Night involved in any way, he didn't know what bot. So you can imagine what happened with the Doom Guard <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> you can imagine what happened there. Um, he didn't know what bolstering was. So we had a, a lot of instances very early on where there'd be like two mobs just about to die. So we went and pulled the next five. So they got double bolstered at full health. And that that was very apparent in the first corridor. It's like, we're fucked. I knew it as soon as we went in. I was like, because all I, all I wanted at this point was to change the key. I don't want a plus three, a plus two. I just want to finish the dungeon. I don't even want a plus one. Just finish the dungeon so it changes the, dun the key to a different dungeon. That's all I wanted. Just to get to the end. That's all I cared about in the world. Um... I've already been at this for so long. This is like two hours in now after making this other dungeon. Uh, but it was pretty apparent. I knew, I knew we were doomed from the first few trash pulls. Uh, so we tried to mention it's like, don't pull, you know, bolstering. You can't pull other mobs while the other mobs are about to die. That's not going to work. Um, but we got to the first boss and I, I'm pretty sure only me and the Windwalker, maybe the healer, maybe, I couldn't really tell, had any idea what this boss did at all. Which again, is part of the problem with Cathedral and its sort of stigma. Is no idea. So I went and so the, the 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 flowers spawn to come in. So I turned around, dotted them up, and started killing them off. When I checked my ray frames, everybody was dead. <laughs> and the the flowers hadn't even got there. I was like, what the fuck? So I can only assume the tank died and then he just killed everybody else. Uh, but I just turned around. I was like, oh shit, everybody's dead. What the fuck? Uh, so at, when we came back to the entrance after resing up. Nobody moved. Clear sign. Everybody's done with this. It's not going to happen. Uh, but the Windwalker, again, was like, yeah, uh, do you want to carry on? Uh, I And he, he was such a star, this guy. He was like, I'm willing to stay. He was like, up for it. I don't know whether he wanted rated IO score or he wanted, uh, or he just didn't want to hurt my feelings because he, he was like, I'm really sorry about your key. Um, he was like, I'm up for it. I'll stay. I'll stay. 
Uh, but I knew that he doesn't speak for everybody. Somebody else is going to leave. And the tank clearly doesn't know what's going on. Uh, so instead of having like a learning lesson throughout it, because they were staying pretty quiet, and I think they were just waiting for the dungeon to fall apart so they could leave guilt-free, I just said, look, we're going to be here for hours like this. If we can't do, if we can't get the first boss past like 80%, and we've had something like 16 deaths on the first trash, then it's not going to happen, so don't worry about it. So he's like, cool, sorry about your key, leave. So now we've got a Cath 12. I went out, tried to start another group. No luck this time. So we tanked the key again. And at this point, uh, at this point, I've had enough. I've absolutely just had enough. I just need this key to change to a different dungeon. So I tanked it all the way to 10. I tanked it all the way to, from... So we started at 14 in this dungeon. I, I tanked it all the way to 10. And I was like, just get me the fuck... A 10 is considered easy by so many people that I just want to get it done so we can get out of it. And at 10, sign up like a motherfucker, because 10's easy, right? 10's easy. Failure. Complete failure. Same reasons again. Just no idea what to do. Just don't know what to do in the dungeon. It came down to nothing more than that. Again, I was at least 10 item levels below everybody else. They just had no idea what they were supposed to be doing, and nobody asked any questions, nobody learned. And a kind of running theme here... Uh, with failure in these dungeons, of which there's been a lot of failure so far. Let's just do the list right now. Let's catch up to where we are. DHT 14 was a failure. Upper 13 was a failure. Upper 12 was a failure. Uh, BR, Cath 14 failure. 13 failure. 12 failure. So we've had a, like 6 or 7 dungeon failures. So you can see how the hours racked up here. Um, and Cath 10 was another failure. Uh, is when dungeons fall apart and fail, people just leave. Like, for the most part, people just leave. And I, they have no idea why it failed. I am 100% convinced that they don't know why it failed. They have no idea. Unless they're the good player who did know why they failed and left because it's like, it's so apparent you guys don't know what's going on in here, I'm out. Um, most people have no idea. And there's no learning process there to say. And, but the information is all there. But they don't know... They don't know why it failed. And I've, I'm, I'm mostly convinced they don't believe it was because of them. Even if it absolutely was, and I can see it a mile away, I can see it in the first trash mob. is like, okay, you're, you're going to be a problem. Um, I, I'm 100% convinced they don't know why. And there's no real... I don't know if there's a solution to that. Other than get friends who are going to explain to you what you did wrong. But anyway, we'll get to that at the end. Um, so, Cat 10, we failed it, but we, we we failed the time, but we got through the dungeon. And that's all I cared about. I was so happy then. And uh, what was uh, what has now been 14 twice? We have had two 14 keys, is now a 9. And 9. We are down to 9. Arcway 9. Easy game, boys. <laughs> Easy game. Arcway 9. How the fuck are we going to fail a 9? We didn't. We didn't. We plus two'd it. Without that tyrannical, free win, stomped through it, no problems at all. Arquay 9, job done. What was interesting in the Arquay 9, though, as a side note, was uh, people using tactics that are for uh, what I consider to be very high keys, or at least reasonably high fortified keys. <laughs> Hiding, line of sighting, and all this in a plus nine where nothing's got any health. I'm getting really antsy uh, about not doing the tactic correctly. I was like, I don't know whether that's a guy who's as very set in his ways or a guy who's seen somebody do it on stream. They've seen, like, me do it or they've seen Ginji do it or uh, Ginji, you know, they've seen, you know, they've seen Slooty do it or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> there's no place for a lot of those tactics in a, in a plus nine. There isn't. Uh, either way, we plus two that and we got a Nelf. I was so happy. All I was praying for at this point in my life, in my whole life, was not to get another cathedral or, an, or um, a seat of the trial for a key. That's all I was hoping for. So in Nelf 11, I was super confident about. I was like, how do you... Nelf's so regularly done. Most people know Nelf by now. Like, it's to not even plus one it would be crazy not to finish in time at this point. Especially, like, my character overgears the fuck out of a plus 11. Uh, as, and everybody else is way higher than me, so how can it go wrong? Uh, failure. <laughs> Because there's no amount of gear that can save you from Molten Wave. There's no way. There's just no amount of gear that can save you from standing in that. It doesn't matter how overgeared you are. And we get to the end and it's, it's, it's a wipe scenario. Uh, and the impatient ninja pulls that happened at that point as well. Just charging into the boss and stuff. Were very infuriating. I, sh I should have had some red flags actually at Snake, Snake Bro. 
Uh, the tank didn't run away from the tongue, and I, I soul stoned him while he was getting chewed to death. I saw him get picked up because he, he, he kind of uh, the spiked tongue started, and instead of running, I made like a, a, a path with the green pools. Uh, so one guy got it, so I moved in front of him, so we made a nice easy path for him. Um, he didn't run away from me, he just moved back a little bit, and then stood there, and just instantly got picked up and eaten, and his health was just going... Pfft. So I like soul stoned him quickly. Um, but then that meant he didn't know what to do on the last boss, which I only recently found out to do, to be honest, I'm not going to lie, uh, with AMing certain things. I'd, always, I'd, I'd mostly done it passively by just having AM up <laughs> uh, to avoid the knockback. So the tank's flying around the room, <laughs> and then Molten Wave's coming. So I ended up like raid leading it, essentially, on the third pull. We wiped twice to it. The key was depleted. Uh, we waited for Bloodlust and stuff like that, and I was like, wave soon. Do this, do that. Uh, trying to teach people to get the Molten Giant to hit the wall was really hard. But now, I think the tank was Russian and didn't speak any English. Because I tried to explain to him what was going on. Uh, but he never stopped doing anything. So the Molten Giant would, st would spawn. He'd instantly stun it instead of dragging it over to the thing. And I was like, please stop stunning it. Please. Please. I wasn't being rude. I was like, please stop stunning it. And he kept doing it anyway. Uh, anyway, we failed, we failed now. So we've gone to 11. Down to 10 again. Dark Heart 10. Uh, f fine. Plus two it. No problems. More of Souls 12 is where we got. More of Souls. Um, people are going to have different conflicting opinions on this. I consider More of Souls 12 Tyrannical to be reasonably easy. The, sec uh, the second boss is going to be the problem. Hell, you, you can do Hellier without a healer. And not on Grievous, but for the most part, like everything on Hellier is pretty much avoidable besides the debuff. And um, the first boss on 11, you can kind of zerg down pretty quickly. Um, not to be the case. Not to be the case. So we just, the second boss decides, I should have known. I should have known. Um, typically, I only, I personally obviously it would be a problem at 15 plus, so 16s and 17s. Um, but in this, it was like, even in a 12, it was super dangerous. And the group just fell apart at that boss. They just could not down it under any circumstances. It wasn't going to happen. It was just wipe after wipe after wipe after wipe. And I was really, really sad about this. And the annoying thing was, <laughs> when we did get to the end of more, I got another more key. <laughs> I got another more key uh, for an 11 more. When we finally got it, we, we killed more and got another more key. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I ended up doing more of Souls on Saturday, yesterday. Uh, three or four times. It was amazing. It was pretty incredible to see. I'm drifting into like this lunacy world, which is where I was at this point. And once we did finish more of Souls... The key that we have right now was a Halls of Valor 13. And a 963 tank, a Demon Hunter tank, just went lol, rip. And I was like, how is Halls of Valor 13 a rip? How the fuck is that a rip? But it is. He's like, you, know, you, ain't, you just said you ain't getting that done. And I was like, motherfucker, I guess we'll find out. And that's where we are today. Now, some conclusions then. <sighs> Some conclusions, some some ideas that have spawned from this that I think are worthy of discussion. Um, part of part of the reason this was so hard and why we got we went for we started at a fourteen. We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen mythic pluses, and ended on a thirteen. Seventeen. One. This uh, this took more time investment than a week's worth of mythic raid progression. Which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, time invested was way beyond that. Um, so that would be 4, 8, 12 hours, right? 12 hours is generally Mythic Raid progression. 12 hours a week. Maybe slightly more, slightly less. Uh, right now, my Mythic Raid progression is about 4 hours. Because it's farm and done. This took way longer than that. Way, way longer. And that's really sad. That's really sad. On the other side of it is, if you're playing the game this way, and I want to be 100% clear on this, some of you will be either typing or kind of putting something like, welcome to my world, something like that. Don't wear that like a badge of honor. This is insane. This is utterly insane. This is not, I'm not playing the game you're playing. 
And that's why things probably seem very different. And you can change this so easily. You can. If I was to find a guild, and the only reason I haven't now is because people want to use it as an excuse, this would never be the case. Ever. I would never have had to go through this horror and wasted life like I had to here to get nowhere. I didn't get a single item out of it. I went backwards in terms of the keys. I was frustrated. I was angry. And I swear to you, I have no idea. Like, if, if this was how I played WoW, why I wouldn't just play something else? Because I felt like it. I was like, why? I'm just, I'd just rather play something else. This is annoying. It's frustrating going nowhere. This is pointless. Like, I'm not getting anything out of this. And, and if I was to... And then, because it dawned on me, it's like, if I wasn't um, going to find a guild, or if I had the mindset that I don't want to play with other players for some reason, um, and this was to be while going forward, of course people either quit, because why would you do this? And this is where a lot of people are probably quitting. They're like, this is a fucking waste of time. Uh, go and farm transmog forever, because it's easy. I can do it on my own. There's no challenge there. Uh, I can kind of get some reward out of it, which is changing the look of my character, and then I'll just re-roll and do it again. It's so easy to see why people choose that path. Because it's the path of least resistance in most cases. People love transmog, but you can obviously do transmog on the sides of doing other things. It doesn't take a huge amount of time. Um, or push past it. But if you choose to live in this environment and choose to play WoW this way, I, th I think you're, you're crazy. I really think you're crazy because you're playing an awful game. This is awful. This isn't fun. It's not fun at all. It was just frustrating and, and cumbersome. And the way out of it isn't more gear. And I think that's the big important message here. The way out of being in these scenarios is not more gear. It's learning to understand and play. It's just figuring out even the 90% the or the 80% of what your class does and doing it. So some good did come out of this. I'm way, way, way more comfortable on my Warlock now way more comfortable to the point of it being crazy uh learning all the little intricacies of how to push things and do really nice dps and getting really comfortable with managing many dots on many characters all this experience did help me personally i got better as a warlock i and you can see that in the damage meters reflected is that i just every even though i didn't get any gear upgrades my dps goes up like 200k uh single target because i was just learning different things and different ways of managing things different timings and that's what i took away from it but i don't think most people are Learn what's going on around you. The amount of times I see people facing a giant eyeball monster that looks at you, that is literally a giant eyeball, and be smashed in the face with it, is crazy. Like, and I get that a lot of that is probably staring at your buttons, of which I've done many videos on not doing that, and how to get out of that habit. And it works. Believe me, it works. Because I will get past this. I will. I know I'll get past it. At this point, maybe I have to wait till next week. Maybe I have to wait till a reset... Uh, because the, and this comes down to Blizzard's faults here. Uh, Blizzard, uh, Blizzard's errors. Do, is it right that Blizzard has created this environment where suddenly things are dangerous? And it is sudden. There's a sudden jump, certainly at plus 10 and tyrannical. There is a sudden jump from 9 to 10 where bosses fall over and barely do anything to suddenly all these things are happening that are super dangerous. It's a very sudden thing. I would, I would even suggest that perhaps um, it ramps up in a different way. So it gradually occurs and, and becomes more steady. Uh, or maybe focus more on mechanics like they do with Xavius that are so clear to understand. Is you are silenced and there's a big purple circle around you. If I stand near somebody else, I'm no longer silenced. People reacted to that super quickly. It was great to see. It was really good to see. Uh, but when it comes to just something that does damage... You can't do every mechanic that doesn't do damage. Things have to be able to kill players. But you understand what I'm saying here is if it takes you out of your character, it's so much more noticeable and people learn to deal with that rather than just things that do no damage, no damage, no damage, no damage. Now you're dead. Right? That's the big problem here. The other problem is feeding gear <coughs> to people. I think a lot of people are stuck in this... Because of the way the mythic cash system works, which gives you a, a, a higher piece of gear than what you should have earned for that week, right? Um, is it gives people maybe this is intentional, and I'll, I'll, I'll let the uh, I'll let the more uh, pessimistic of you argue over this, I suppose. That because the community sets these item level guidelines, and then you have this drawn out long source of guaranteed extra gear if you do lesser content than what you deserve right so the way blizzard tries to tell you your, your appropriate gear level is the reward it gets you from that dungeon right 
That's how they tell you. They're like, well, this gives that you are wearing this gear and it drops this level of gear. So if it's dropping gear that's less than what you're wearing, you should be doing something more difficult that gives you an actual reward. That's how they're telling you. But the side of that, plus it's kind of having its cake and eating it too, is on the side of that, they're giving you things like, well, you can get a piece of heroic gear for doing four mythic zeros. That's way higher than what you're getting. And also we're going to give you this mythic cash reward, which has a much higher quality piece of gear uh, than what gets through. During Mists of Pandaria, Blizzard said uh, the whole point of the Warforging Titan forging system uh, was because people can get over challenges more easily with gear. Uh, what this has proven to me, certainly with these affixes, is that that's not the case. It's really not the case. There's no amount of gear that's going to protect players uh, or allow them to overcome these challenges when they're designed to murder you. And that's not helping anybody. It's not helping the player base. You can't just keep feeding people gear, right? You can't just keep spoon feeding people really high level gear and expecting... You can't... Like, let's put it this way. You can't just keep giving somebody samurai swords, right? And expect them to suddenly be a samurai, right? They can think... Uh, there's a lot of people out there. I've seen pictures who have a vast collection of samurai swords. They're not a samurai. <laughs> they never will be. That's not going to happen. You can't just keep giving them these things and expecting it to happen. How do they solve it? I think they need to dr bring this shit back. They need to bring it back into a more linear progression. Uh, so that your rewards will come from doing appropriate content. But on the back of that... Are these going to learn? Are people going to learn? Maybe the jump needs to be more gradual rather than hitting 10 and it's suddenly being like tyrannical. I understand why Fortified is way more popular uh, because you can still kind of get away in most cases with AoEing the fuck out of the place, uh, which people can do pretty easily. A lot of people can AoE very effectively, but when it comes to actually dealing with something, um, it's a big challenge. All in all, this was the saddest part of the journey and it's not over yet. We knew it was going to happen. We knew it was going to happen. I will get through this. I would like to do this while it's still these affixes. I think if we can push through on a bolst on this week to get this 15 done, I'd be very happy. But I'm looking at a Halls of Valor 13 key. I'm dealing with a lot of players who can't do Upper Karazhan Cathedral or more of Souls below those levels. We'll see what's going to happen. I'm sad. I'm sad that I I'm I'm sad, I'm sad this is why I'm sad. I'm sad because I think a huge amount of people play in this mass. I think there's so many people there and I think most of them are chasing more gear to get past this and it's not going to help. You're going to be no better off. You might have a higher number on your character but you're not going to be any better off because it's it just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. Ladies and gentlemen, the journey continues. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.